because of their attitude towards life and towards religiosity, towards piety. They claim to be good Muslims, but they will always go to baths and and and, st and 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 so one of the things that the Inquisition uh, would um, do is you the lack of odor, bo, the lack of uh, if you didn't if you smelled good, it was some indication that that was evidence used against you that you're probably a secret Muslim. Um, it's quite fascinating because now you know you, you see these parallels now in the puritanical attitudes. Um, their suspicion of art and their suspicion of, of their, 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 their obsession about eroticism and everything, right? Um, their sort of sanitized pornography. In, in many ways, right? Because it's it's uh, it, while they you know in their obsession with eroticism, they produce the equivalent of anti pornography pornography, or we could say anti nudity pornography. In in so they talk in great detail. One of the um, most fascinating is you know the the um, responsa that says. Uh, braziers or bras are haram, uh, are not allowed. Uh, you know, you, you talk about the great detail in, 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 in between this obsession with not just imagination but eroticism, in, 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 in anything that cannot be controlled. Mm. And ultimately, you know, uh, um, as we were saying yesterday, you know, the, the, there, there hasn't human experience, which is as as valid a part of of, of of the totality of evidence leading to God as anything else. Um, human experience just, uh, it, uh, shows that the, the human beings are created, cre like their maker, uh, uh, craving for creativity. They they're naturally drawn to to, and if they're ill, they're actually drawn to destruction instead of con construction, right? And they're, if they're pathological, if they have something wrong with them, they're, they're drawn to uh, uh, suffering instead of happiness, or they're drawn to ugliness instead of beauty. Um, and it, uh, the, when you try to suppress these innate good-natured urges, this innateness towards goodness in human beings, what do you get? What do you expect to end up with? I, I mean, it is, it is one thing to say we don't want uh, uh, people to abuse animals or children or to, to publicize their private life by creating films showing them copulating with others or, or you know, your body is your business and we don't want uh, uh, um, publications that, that uh, are based on, uh, you know, it, it, it is one thing to negotiate the notions of privacy, right? Or oh, in Islamic jurisprudence, uh, the, 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 um, uh, the horma, what's known as the horma, right? But it is quite another to attempt to have the issue of privacy not come up in the first place by completing by completely suppressing anything but the public. It's a completely different dynamic. Uh, I mean, you cannot avoid. It's it's uh, the, the the question that actually it's quite critical to joining the good and forbidden, forbidding the evil. Can you, can you, can human beings ever avoid or attempt to quash the haram, the, 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 the not good, the unacceptable, right? The, the, the sinful, the forbidden. 
in in the more juristic sense uh, that the word haram means uh, it it is something not acceptable and can can human beings ever avoid the haram to come up in society mm -hmm. well if it does not exist then what does that do to the very notion of the allowable i mean if you if you think about it, if you, you say, well, we are excluding the choice, the possibility of a choice, then on what basis is there punishment or reward, or what basis there is accountability in the hereafter? And the whole the, the Quranic text, you know, it's it's early criticism of its its clash with early Christianity and Judaism is on this on the, this point is is that the individual accountability right let us and no one can bear the sins of another uh, and that salvation without struggle, internal struggle, cannot be. It's meaningless. Salvation ultimately is an act of grace by God, but one earns it. And it, and it, it, it is part of a, a, it is not an irrational process, it is a process that, that, that has rational mechanisms to reach. And this is, um, this is a very important, crit critical point in, in also in Islamic theology, because if if uh, if uh, to, to use technical language, Puritans emphasize very much a legal concept called sedda zara, the, the, the quashing the means to evil. Okay, so while interestingly under this notion of sedda zara. Um, uh, um, if I had a word, I would have written it on it. But um, the the logic of it is that okay, we know what is bad by going to the text, and then any possible means that can lead to the bad are also bad, and then that gives us authority to forbid it. But if you reflect on this logic and its extra textualism in itself, right? I mean, it, 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 it claims to be a literalist application, but it's not. Mm. It is affirmatively not a literalist application. And this is one of the contradictions that long ago, I mean, long before even the, the Re Renaissance Reformation or, or uh, you know, in, 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 in the, the debate between the Khwarij the earliest Puritans in Islam mm -hmm. and uh, uh, the, the, the various theolo theologies that clash with the Khawarij, that the Khawarij imagined a sin-free society. And theologically, mainstream Islamic theology said it, it is not only cannot be, but it would render the whole narrative of creation meaningless. It, it would not, then being Muslim doesn't mean anything. Then being good doesn't mean anything. Then, if, if, if and not only that, but if you try to, if you try to identify evil through text and then cut off all possible avenues to 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 what is evil, the the again from going back 1,400 years ago, the the, the response to 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 the, the argument for Sadr Zaraya, this quashing of of temptations, um, uh, and Sadr Zaraya actually literally means said means to block. Zara'a, do you know what Zara'a means excuses? Zara'a. That comes from Zari'a. Yeah. And so it, the idea is that, oh, people, you know, these means 
people try to protect their me this means basically out of being smart Alex out of being uh, disingenuous out of being argumentative out of being troublemakers so it is not that they have any rights that are being violated it is that they want to get away with something that's li if you, literal meaning of the word right and so you come in and you say ah oh, I don't accept your trickery I don't accept your zaria I don't accept your your excuse I am going to forbid it forbid the means right but then of course, that raises the, the pedagogical question of what, uh, uh, and, and partly rhetorical, is uh, well, who and under what authority do you decide that this is not a valid claim of right, but just a merely excuse so you can violate a right, right? And so, in, in Usuli works, uh, you often find uh, the, the argument that the, this, the blocking of the means to, to, to evil is often invoked in itself, it is an excuse to, de to deprive people of their rights rather than to protect anything legitimate. And if you if you look at human history, we find that this is actually what history teaches. I mean, the, the best example is Saudi Arabia. The, the logic of forbidding women to drive solidly rests on Sadisaria, right? The blocking the means to evil. There's no, nothing in the text, you know, that's why all the Muslim, rest of the Muslim world uh, doesn't have that issue. And but, so the Wahhabis reason that, well, mobility equals temptation equals harm right but and when women say we have a right to mobility that that's is that is an excuse that they are making up it's not a, a, a valid right okay but then how can you make such a blanket judgment such a sweeping judgment can you trust anyone to be in a position to make such a judgment and be confident that you have not denied people the hukuk, their, their legitimate rights. And you know, Muslims today, they, they often forget that the word, the, the, you know, they often react to the notion of rights as if it's a Western invention. While they know that in their own theology and in their own jurisprudence, the notion of hukuk is very central. I mean, you, any Muslim who has been raised, you know, knows that, ah, yes, the, the, the idea of haq and hukuk and haq and hukuk al ibad and the, the rights of, of, of people, it, it's, it's quite critical to theology. But the, the 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 puritanical act is that it's as if it says well yes it's critical to theology but it's not important in law yeah, that's literally what it does you know, it says, ah, yeah, but you know we can believe in it you yes yes you you have rights as a human being but law doesn't have to worry about that because we can all rest assured that if we apply the text automatically your rights are going to be protected. So substantive inquiry into the actual haq, into the actual right, is never called for. Mm -hmm. This is, to say the least, is quite problematic. But it, it is part of, you know, um, Yesterday, I was saying that we were talking about enjoining the good and forbidding the evil. And, and just to, to give you a little bit of a, 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 a sort of positioning, you know, um, uh, if you've um, studied uh, the theology of Thomas Aquinas, um, Aquinas, his, his, his sort of foundational philosophical thought is that a Christian must uh, uh, seek what is good 
and uh, stay away from what is not good. And then Aquinas raises the question, well, what is good? What, what is the nature of good? But of course, Aquinas himself in his Summa uh, uh, it, it quite explicitly discusses the thought of Al-Ghazali and Ibn Rushd, Avaraz, and Ibn Sina, Avicina, and, and actually sides with one against... So, to Aquinas' credit, unlike what was common in his time, it was, it was quite common to read these Muslim thinkers, but um, to, um, uh, uh, to, to not acknowledge it, not admit that you've, you've done so. Um, but it, it, we, we have a lot of historical evidence. I mean, there's a book uh, called Ghazali's Influence, Ghazali's Influence Upon the West. Um, and it literally tracks what like someone as, as uh, that you normally modern Muslims think of as orthodox and, and the extent to which Ghazali affected so many uh, uh, um, rationalist theological orientations. Mm -hmm. uh, in in the West and and so and, and leave alone someone like Avaros who you know or Avicenna or Ibn Bajah who uh, um, you know the, the the lines of evidence are are quite clear uh, in in this case but even Ghazali had an enormous influence but uh, so anyway to Aquinas's credit Aquinas admits that he has read all of these uh, texts and that um, he. Um, uh, he, he's, he shows great deal of knowledge of there, and and he's not. I mean, he's not, of course, the only one. Because, for instance, uh, Williams of Ockham, a, a, a famous Christian theologian, again, and within certain quarters, like in 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 in, in the universities, the early universities, uh, in the Italian universities, French universities, British universities. There used to be actually factions of students known as the Avaroists, the, 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 the champions of Ibn Rushd, or the Avacinists, the champions of Ibn Sina, or uh, 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 sort of less known now, even the, uh, I forgot now what the, the, the Latin version of Ghazali, but they're, they're, and people mm -hmm. used to fight about these. Uh, you know, no, the, the, this, and then of course uh, we're quite familiar today when you, you find Muslim intellectuals, you know, saying, "Oh, we, we follow the ideas of Heidegger, or we follow the ideas of Habermas," or uh, and it's 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 quite parallel. If um, if you're ever, um, I mean, it's worth it. There is a book called the History of Byzant of, of Byzantine, um, the History of Byzantium. The name of the author is Vasilev. It's a two-volume work. By the way, you, you can open the window if it's it's getting stuffy, right? You open the uh, window. It, it, it's, uh, it's, it feels to me like it's getting a little bit stuffy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the author's name is Vasilev, and in the second volume, <coughs> in, in I, it's I think page one hundred and two, one hundred and three, something like that. Uh, it, it, there's this fascinating quote. Uh, uh, Vasilev pre uh, reproduces, um, I don't remain, uh, remember which historian, basically a historian in the West who's complaining about how obsessed students of his day were with studying what Muslim philosophers thought. And he says, you know, the, 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 he is obviously he's a conservative uh, source that says, you know, this is so despicable, you know, the, uh, all these students, all they're interested in is what these Muslims have written and what these, uh, and, and the minute a new book comes out, you find all of them uh, chasing to, to, to read it while none of them are interested in, in reading the Bible anymore. I mean, it's a fascinating those who were interested in social history, uh, it's a fascinating quote, and um, one of, and there are many uh, like it, but it tells you quite a bit about the, you know, the way 
intellectual influence moves and, and so on. But uh, anyway, um, so uh, much before Aquinas, centuries before Aquinas, the, the Quran emphasizes repeatedly this notion of enjoining the good and forbidding the evil, our model for Nihal Munka. And of course, that begs the question of well, what is Maruf and what is Munka? What is good? And what is what is evil or not good? Now, what what actually proved to be challenging in the in the very early theological works, even written as 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 early as the third century is the terminology of, of the Qur'an itself. Because what does ma'roof, if, if, what does ma'roof literally mean? You guys know? So it comes from the word arafa. No. To know, right? Arif oh, yeah. arafa. Right. And munkara comes from the, from, from the root nakara, to be to deny, deny right? To, to in, in is to, den is to yeah. uh, refuse. deny, refuse, reject, and so on. So, if you say ma'ruf, the, the word, as opposed to, for, is, for instance, if you said, an amr bil hasana, wa nahi an sayyi'a, if you choose, if you use different terminology, you you can. Or let me um, um, try to rephrase. The terms, the terminology of the Quran implied through the word ma'ruf and munkar that notions of good and bad are socially contingent in some fashion. It, it, in, in some fashion, it depends on what is known from the word Arafat to know, mm -hmm. or what is uh, rejected or denied or refused uh, uh, from the word Nakara, right? And uh, the, the, the Quran clearly, in, uh, uh, God can use and does use, you know, different contexts, sayi'a uh, or hasana, which literally means the beautiful or the ugly, or the inherently good and the inherently bad, with the non-contextual connotation mm -hmm. that doesn't depend on social mores. Now, it, 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 quite critical to this is, remember, in the, in, in, in the backdrop to what we are talking about yesterday about what the word Islam itself means. For instance, the Quranic uh, uh, passage, Allah uh, Salam, and God invites or commands or uh, uh, God's message is the abode of Salam. What does Salam mean? Peace, safety, peace, peace, peace. tranquility, right? Tranquility. But you know, and you couldn't uh, uh, like when you say we we have peace, we say uh, Salam, um, uh, or even the, the very common greeting, you know, Salam alaikum, peace on you, uh, peace on to you, and so on. So God affirmatively commands, or God invites to abode of salam, the, 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 literally the house of peace. But it is understood by theologians as, uh, this is not a, a, a legal construct, this is a, a theological or, or moral construct, and it basically, Critical to the state of Muslim uh, that this, this reaching the state of Islam of, of submission is as we we talked yes uh, we mentioned yesterday that 
there is a state of consciousness. The state of consciousness makes you see the, you're not simply dependent on the material world as a basis for your knowledge, but your consciousness and your knowledge base transcends the material world to both an ghaib, that you, you know the, the world of the metaphysical world, and you engage the, the metaphysical world, the ghaib, which, you know, as uh, the, the famous uh, uh, report by the Prophet, uh, that you are not truly you don't have belief until you accept or you believe in the metaphysical, in, in that which is not <coughs> material. And it, so the state of, 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 of consciousness, ultimately, you realize, it's as if you realize what really makes all the difference in reality, which is ultimately God and so and in, sub, in, in, in accepting that, at the same time, uh, you, you reject all false gods. Uh, you, you refuse to submit to anything or anyone other than God. Mm -hmm. And so it's an, it's an altered state of consciousness. And that's, uh, for instance, when, when the Quran talks about those who are, are in the state of Islam, it says, uh, they, they do not fear and they are not uh, uh, sad right so in fact this this state of Islam the state of turning to God and embracing God if truly achieved right through the various trials and tribulations and struggle and so on you get to a point that not only do you reject false gods, but your, your, your understanding of reality frees you of fear and anxiety, restlessness, uh, depression. Um, it, it, it's, and the, the summed up in this world, in the word, salam the state of perfect peace or tranquility. And so, if you think of the greeting, Salaamu Alaikum, a peace unto you, which the Quran says is from the time of Abraham. It is really a prayer, right? You're, you're not saying you have peace, you are saying, I hope you will have peace. So it's a state, it's an aspirational state, right? It's something that the theologically we're supposed to, Muslims are supposed to aspire for, that that would be the ultimate attainment and the this, this struggle for, and those who manage to actually achieve it on this earth before uh, the hereafter, they have attained a state of, and here again, you'll recognize the Quran uh, for those who are familiar with it, you have attained a state of husna, husna, state of beauty. Mm -hmm. Not of, of, you attained a state of ma'roof, right? But husna, you've attained ultimate beauty. And the manifestation of this beauty in, 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 again, nearly all the theological uh, schools becomes both physical and metaphysical. It is not that you, you see a human being and say, oh, he's, he's gorgeous. So you see a human being and say, ah, the, the, the peace, the beauty of this human being permeates to the soul. And that's also, again, the Quran says that those who are beautiful will recognize those who, in other words, those who are good will recognize people who have this goodness, but if, if you 
are you're self troubled, you'll have a hard time recognizing, or you might recognize, but you might reject, you might hate, you might uh, 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 want to destroy uh, um, someone or 